What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is Wednesday, which of course means it's time for another Western New York Wednesday here on the channel, and the beer I'm reviewing today comes from the 42 North Brewing Company, and they're out of East Aurora, New York, and this is their Goza Colada. So they are calling this a Goza that is brewed with pineapples, a touch of toasted coconut, limes, salt, and a hint of lactose comes in at 4.7%. Alcohol by volume, no IBUs listed in the time of review. This can is approximately seven weeks old. So this is basically a pina colada inspired uh, goza. And yeah, sounds pretty good. It says coconut and lime on the label. They're using a touch of toasted coconut and they're also brewing this with uh, salt and uh, a hint of lactose. Or do they also say a touch, made with a touch of milk sugar, touch of lactose. So yeah, sounds pretty good. Um, there's two things that I like to review as many as possible when it comes to like fruited sours. Key lime or key lime pie uh, sours are my favorite because I love key lime pie. But then I also love uh, coconut, specifically toasted coconut. So if you give me a pina colada beer of any sort, yeah, I'm into it. So this sounds like it might be quite tasty. Uh, we are you know, approaching the end of summer and uh, I figured this would be a good one for Western New York Wednesday. So let's give it a pour here. See what we got going on. Using the big ditch glass, I need to get a 42 North uh, proper glassware because, yeah, I just haven't. I need to go to the brewery and grab one at some point. Anyway, I haven't reviewed a beer from 42 North in a while, so... Yeah, anyway, uh, that looks kind of like a doing style IPA. It has this really nice, bright, vibrant um, orange color with some lemon hints in there. Uh, yellow lemon, same thing. Uh, but yeah, it had a uh, half finger to three quarters of a finger of this, you know, very... Um, sporadic looking uh, bubbles when it comes to the uh, head, very bright white, but now it's dissipated to a thin film. And I believe that is from the coconut oils or maybe even the lime uh, that they're using in here. But uh, yeah, the head no longer exists basically. Anyway, it's good nose. Wow, that's that's very carbonated. I don't know if you're gonna hear it on my, uh, on my microphone, but super carbonated. You can hear the spritzy bubbles. Huh, so I'm not getting a ton of coconut. They say you touch a toast of coconut. Definitely getting pineapple. It's, it's like an over-ripened pineapple. There's definitely li uh, lime in here as well, citrus character, even a lemon. Not really picking up on the salinity at all. There's a generic sweetness that I can attribute to maybe the lactose, but in general, it just has a nice sweetness. It doesn't smell like it's gonna be overly sour or maybe even tart. Yeah, it smells, it smells refreshing, but it doesn't smell like amazing or anything. It just smells like it's gonna be a nice refreshing goza. So let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Ooh, as more of a tart approaching sour bite on the on the taste. Yeah, so really you can tell this is a base goza, which is nice. Those adjuncts are not, you know, running wild like Hulkamania in the 80s on over the base beer. There is a really nice lemon lime kind of character, uh, to high tartness, like firm tartness approaching sour in the base. Definitely getting like a weedy component from the um the base as well. There's a nice drying component on the finish, uh, omnipresent salinity to the taste as well. So you're getting the, you know, the wheat that's in the base goza. You're getting the, the sourness or approaching sourness that you would want from a goza. And I'm getting the, um, the salinity that I, that you kind of need for the, uh, the base style as well. So that, that lime that they're using is kind of mixing in with the base beer, but I'm getting Honestly, it's funny because they said a touch of uh, toasted coconut. I'm getting more coconut than I am pineapple, which I didn't think that was going to happen based on the ingredient list. But yeah, it has a nice toasted coconut character. And then it follows by pineapple. This is, if you want a pina colada beer that has nuanced characters of a pina colada, because there's so many crazy beers that I've had before. Like I've had the 450 North uh, pina colada sour. They did their slushy. And that was like full on just straight on pina colada. No, no beer presence, just like pina colada. This one, you get the base goza, and then you get the pina colada over top of it, which is which is really, I appreciate that. I guess I appreciate that from the standpoint that so many fruit beers nowadays and so many fruited sours are just whatever the adjuncts are, and the base beer gets lost a lot. So I like that you can taste the base beer, and it's accentuated by the actual um, you know ingredients as opposed to just being full on, here's the ingredients, base beer's gone. 4.7%, the mouthfeel. Lower side of medium body, which is appropriate. Maybe higher side of light body, kind of in that range. Um, the lactose, adding like a little bit of sweetness overall to the beer. 
maybe a touch of vanilla like I get from lactose a lot. Uh, but it's really not doing much for the mouthfeel for me because the mouthfeel is really crisp. Um, the beer itself is pretty clean and it's super refreshing. So it's not like adding like a, a creaminess here or like a softness. It's just kind of there, I think, more for the purpose of the actual taste of the beer as opposed to the mouthfeel, at least from my palate and what I'm detecting. This is a nice summer crusher beer. Uh, not a ton of complexity to this one, although there is, you know, some complexity here. But I think I just appreciate this one, you know, being a base Goza and then having the beer accentuated by, you know, all the adjuncts as opposed to the opposite. So, yeah, this isn't like an amazing beer for me, but I will say they did a great job of making this one super drinkable. I could drink two or three of these. After I'd say two, maybe three cans, I think too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing and usually you want to move on. So I feel like with this beer, after a couple cans, I'd be like, all right, I'm done with that flavor profile. I'm going to move on to something else. I also think that over time, I I just feel like maybe the tartness and the sourness would get to me because like I said, it's on the higher side of the tart scale. It's a firm tartness approaching sour, but I think after a couple cans, I think my pal would be like, all right, I'm done with the, you know, done with the sour beers now. Let's move on to something else. So um, yeah, really good beer. So goes a, a colada from 42 North. I'm going to give this a low four out of five. I'm going to go 3.9 out of five. Um, I, the thing about it is that it's not, you know, I've had so many pina colada beers and I've had so many gozas and so many just fruited sours and stuff. This is not on the upper echelon for me personally, but what I can say about this one is it's extremely well made and I like that you can taste the base. I don't know how many times I can say it in single review, maybe like a hundred, but yeah, I, I, I hope that a lot of you feel me when I'm saying that because so many of these beers are just like, they're not even beers anymore. And I like, listen, I love the 450 North slushies. I love, you know, all the crazy like slushy beers and, you know, creamsicle beers and all these cr crazy beers that like kind of taste like not beer. Those are delicious. Don't get me wrong. But when you get a beer like this that has, you know, three or four different adjuncts and you can still taste the base beer, I respect that. And I respect 42 North for this beer. So 3.9 out of 5 for Goze Colada. If you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. Price and availability, I think I paid under 4 bucks a can for this. So I think it was like three fifty ish I bought this at Premier Gourmet in Amherst, New York. Um, it could have been cheaper, just as expensive at the brewery. I want to say this was no more than $16 a four-pack. So I'm pretty sure it was under $4 a can. And availability, they released it at the brewery, but then it got distribution in the West New York area. So if you're in the West New York area, you should, have, you should be able to probably still find this maybe hanging around on some bottle shop uh, shelves. If not, uh, hopefully they brew it again. So appreciate everybody stopping by. 4.7% uh, alcohol by volume. Yeah, I, again, when beers are like sub 6% now, I don't even mention the, uh, the alcohol and if I can taste it because honestly, if it's under 6% nowadays, I can taste alcohol. That's a rarity. So I usually don't speak about it until the end of the reviews where I'm like, I'm going to say this and I do this. I'm just going to stop going forward, okay? If it's under 6%, and I can't taste the alcohol, no reason to mention it, or, or I'd mention it, right? That's just how it works. Anyway, take it easy to the next one. Cheers.